This side, Rahul Magan here is the Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting LLP. And today we would be covering a technical topic which is interest rate risk in banking books. Now this is a topic which you will get almost everywhere. The reason being it's a pretty hot topic. Nowadays as you very well understand that compliance is changing at a quite faster pace. The regulators are very much concerned about the compliance because and also they are very much serious about the shocks which banks are about to face. And especially during the times when the people like Donald Trump, although for good, he decided that he is going to increase the rate at least by three times in 2018. And I might not be surprised even if he crossed the fourth time as well. Now, as for us, watching a Fed policy is quite simple. Simple in the sense like, boss, Donald Trump is hiking the rate by, or, or he hiked the rate by 25 bips. For us, it's pretty easy. But for a bank, that is not pretty easy. Bank do need to do a reporting of that under pillar 2, ICAP, to the regulators and that is what all about, which is, that is what interest rate risk in banking book is all about. It's a pretty, pretty important concept. And unfortunately, as usual, this concept is being completely missed in the countries like India and to an extent in China. But if you go to Europe, if you go to US, if you compare Singapore, to an extent Hong Kong, you will feel that people are particular about that, especially Europe, US and Singapore. So what interest rate risk in banking book is all about? This covers all assets and liabilities at the group level in a bank whereby they are subject to interest shocks. Unfortunately, majority of the people, those who in the layman terms refer the word interest shocks, they actually do not know what are the different types of shocks which we have, which could hit the bank. Now here are the different type of shocks which we have. Now first of all, for the sake of example, we have taken few banks which are, uh, you know, I would say, which are very known in the market. Example, Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, JP Morgan, Standard Chartered, UBS, ANZ and few European banks. I would like to concentrate my position only on the Goldman Sachs because this is a very perfect example in that regards. Unfortunately, we tend to believe that Interest rate shocks are nothing but it's a change in the interest rate. No, it's not like that. First of all, we need to appreciate that a bank is a financial entity who is dealing with a client of one day and who is dealing with a client of 30 years old. So I, as a Goldman Sachs, having a client who is a one year old client, one day old client, on the contrary, I would have a client who is 30 years old, old client. Or I am dealing with a debt of 30 days on the contrary I'm dealing with a debt of you know uh, might be 30 years 50 years maybe revolver more than that right and maybe different interest rate indexes because yesterday we discussed about the LIBOR transitioning and this thing would be most complicated when the LIBOR, LIBOR transitioning would happen when ESMA European Securities Market Authority when they will come up with their paper in the second half of 2018 wherein they will ask for the comments only god knows what would be in the paper and 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 what due diligence they did but if we go with the report that anywhere between 2018 from 18 till 2021 we will go with the LIBOR LIBOR transitioning there are practically six type of shocks which we have one is parallel shock up parallel shock down steepener shock flatter shock uh, short term shock up short term shock down now here we will go this is what federal reserve is all about do you have a fed rate and at every meeting you are concerned that boss whether the donald trump will get this hike or not what is the maximum height they are doing they are going to hike it by 25 bips so all the interest rates which are there in the system they are going to be hiked by 25 bips Although we very well understand that the people like Donald Trump will never reduce the interest rate, but for a minute, assume they will reduce the interest rate, it would go down. Now this is parallel shift up, this is parallel shift down. One thing which we have is a steepener shock. What do you mean by steepener shock? Steepener shock happens something like 2008, something like 2012. You know, something like uh, maybe pre, uh, something like 1930, whereby things will change all of a sudden. Example like that. It will go, it will go, it will go, it will go like that. This is a steepener shock. One is flatter shock. Flatter shock is nothing much. 
RBI is a perfect example of flutter shock. What flutter shock is all about? This is what flutter shock is all about. Since space is little less, you have a repo rate which is more or less stagnant. So you know that boss, what is the maximum which could happen? It would happen 25 bips up or it would happen 25 bips down. And you also very well understand that in India, the absence of Soviet yield curve. We do not have a Soviet yield curve in India. It's a very sad thing that majority of the people across the across India refer this 10 year yield curve, 10 year benchmark as a Soviet yield curve. I don't know. So if the 10 year benchmark, which is today approximately 7.9, take it as a 8. Do you think that everything which has risen to 8%? It is not. But there are many intelligent people in India who refer this as a Soviet yield curve. For them, it is a flatter shock. One is short term shock up, one is short term shock down. This is a very rare phenomena whereby the impact would only happen in the short end curve, not happen in the long end curve. But in either case, it would impact a consideration which is known as belly of the curve. Interest rate risk in the banking book is a pretty important thing for the people to learn. Immunization will come here, cross immunization will come here, net immunization will come here. Immunization of only assets come here. Immunization of only liabilities would come here. Not but last but not the least, how you would be hedging that? You would be hedging that using various ways. You have dollar swaps, you have reverse dollar swaps, you have uh, linkers, you have floaters, you have adjustable rate securities, you have floats, you have caps, you have range forward contracts, you have FRA, forward rate agreement. There are a lot of ways through which you can hedge that. But to cut the long story short, interest rate risk in the banking book is subject to a client who is just a one year, one day old client and it is subject to a client who is a 30 year old client might be greater than that. All the big banks of the globe like Goldman Sachs, Standard Chartered, UBS, European Bank, Australian banks, they are subject to that shock. They are subject to that, uh, that, that regulation. Now how you would do that? Under Basel 3, there is a standardization, there is a standardization of that. So there are 12 point procedures. You have to follow the entire 12 point procedures and the final point of the 12th, which is here, which is known as reporting. And that reporting you have to do under Basel 3, pillar 2, ICAP, which is right here, which you will do on ICAP. So in short, uh, this is how it would move. We have one more uh, sister concern of that, which, uh, which we are going to discuss in the next video, which is CSSRB, Credit Risk, sorry, Credit Spread Sensitivity uh, Risk in Bank, sorry, I will say CSSBB, Credit Spread Sensitivity in Bank Book. In case you end up any question, you have our Skype ID Rahul5327. Our, our platform is www.fixedincome.global. Our website is www.treasuryconsulting.in. Mobile is 9899242978. Email is rahul.magan at the rate treasuryconsulting.in. We have more than 135 technical video, uh, technical trainings which is available on our platform. www.fixedincome.global. You are most welcome to visit there and you can avail any of the training programs. And also, not to mention, our private placement platform is adding a lot of videos. Tomorrow, we are coming up very good videos about bank guarantee. Have a wonderful time. Enjoy your trade. Thank you.